All right, Point Nation, today I have what I hope to be a very instructional video about something that I think is the second most important thing you need to know as an acrylic paint pouring artist, and that is the densities of paint. The number one thing, consistency. You gotta have the right consistency. The number two thing, densities of paint. That's how you understand what paint's gonna sink, what paint's gonna rise, what potential effects you're gonna get because of the sinking and rising of paints. Are you gonna get cells? Are you gonna get pearl cells? Are you going to get colors that mix together to make mud? That is so important to know the density of your paints. Now, I will warn you up front, there is no way to know exactly what the density of your paints are unless you're measuring them after you mix them with water in your pouring medium. There's just no way to know. However, you can get a good idea of how dense your paints is or how heavy your paints are going to be compared to other paints and I have already done a video on that. I will link it in the description above and I recommend you watch that either before or after this video because it's going to be very important. But what I've done is I've taken a bunch of different colors. Now I've taken four different colors. Blacrylic Mars Black which should be uh, the heaviest of the colors. Blacrylic Titanium White, which should be the second heaviest and not that much lighter, uh, not that much lighter than the Mars Black. The uh, Artist Loft Ultramarine Blue, which should be right in the middle of heaviness. The um, Primary Red from Liquitex, um, this uses a magenta uh, pigment, which is a very light pigment generally. And then two bonus ones which I don't know the weight of these either one, the Blacrylic Gold and then this Apple Barrel Orange. I don't know the weight of these. I don't know which pigments they get used, so we're, these are gonna be the mystery ones. So what we're gonna do here is I have paints mixed up in two different thi thicknesses or consistencies. The first consistency, uh, I think probably this will be the best one to see, is gonna leave a mound upon a mound and then disappear. So it's not, not thick, but um, kind of the standard that I normally use with my pores. The second consistency is it barely makes a mound and goes away. And what we're going to do is we're going to pour a line of all 12 of these. Six, six thick, six thin on my glass pouring plate here. And then I'm going to take leftovers of all of these and make very thin lines across all 12 of those. So I'll have 12 thick lines this way of the thick paint and 12 thin lines this way of the thin paint. That should give me two things. One, it should show me which of the pigments are thickest so I can see how it interacts with the, you know, how the black interacts with the white and the black interacts with the orange, black and blue, etc. And then it also shows me I can compare that with exactly the same thing with a thinner version of the black. So I'll have black over thick black and I'll have uh, black over thick blue and black over th uh, thin blue and vice versa. So I'll have all these different things that I can start to see how these are going to interact. Now I want you guys to see this because it's so important to what you're doing with paint pouring. If you can understand this and understand how to get the right consistencies you can make any paint work. Some paints are gonna be better, more vivid, some pouring mediums are gonna be better for some things and other things, but you can make any of those work if you understand density of paint and consistency. This is all about density. I am going to film from the bottom also because I want you to see what happens to those small things of paint as we uh, pour them on and as time goes by, see if they sink and show up underneath. So I'm gonna put my phone under here and record also from the bottom. So first we're gonna start out with the heavy paints here on this side and the lighter paints on this side. So the heaviest paint is the black. These are gonna be my thin. Then are going to spread out more. And 
And I apologize for that light in the video, but that's the only way you're really gonna be able to see underneath when I do this. So again, my darkers are the thick here, my lighters are the thinner here, and we're just gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna start on this side so I don't That did not quite work because I don't have enough color. And then we're going to go with the lighter. So something fascinating about the bottom is none of the colors actually reached the glass on the second layer. None of them. There is no color here. I was surprised by that. I figured some of it would get to the bottom. If I poured more, I'm sure it would have. But with the thin stripes that I have, they don't ever reach or have enough mass to, or have enough weight to push that out. The second thing I want you to notice here is the thin colors and the thick colors, the thin, these are all thin on top, right here is thin on top of thick, right here is uh, thick on top of thin. There's not a lot of difference between how these look. You know, the white stripes here, the black on top, the pinstripe for the red. The red did, um, the thin red did expose more on the thick white than it did here, which I can completely understand. White does absorb other colors, so that's, not abnormal, but it didn't change a huge amount on the regular colors, except for the white. Everything else was pretty similar thick to thin, which was very interesting. Okay, so what do we learn here? A couple things that I see from this experiment is one, the orange is very, very light and it just popping up to the top and covering everything else. That's not abnormal for craft paint. They're usually very light. They don't use high quality pigments and usually synthetic pig pigments because they're cheaper and there's not much in there. So that's not all that surprising. You'll find that a lot of craft paints are going to rise to the top compared to other nicer quality paints. The second thing I notice here is the blacrylic black is actually not a very heavy paint like I'd expect from Mars Black. Um, if I went to the actual acrylic, the student acrylic paints from Blick, it uh, would give me, it would be heavier. Or if I used like a Liquitex or something else, I would get a better, not better. As long as I know what it is, it doesn't matter what I'm using because I know what the density of the paint is relative to the other paints. But Usually I want my black to sink. So I'd want a higher quality black. Another thing is this blue is very light. It is not near as heavy as the golden uh, ultramarine blue is. And so I would put it on the low or uh, less dense side of my scale compared to other paints. Because it's even less dense than the red or magenta I mean, this is primary red, and it's the primary pigment in primary red is uh, magenta. And it's less dense than the magenta. The magenta actually fell through the blue in both the thick and thin cases. The last thing is titanium white. It's heavy. It's one of the heavier paints here, and we knew that going forward. That's why we use titanium white for the Shelley Art Blooms technique as a cell activator because it one it's good at creating the cells and also it drops in down below the rest of the paints so now i want to ask you guys what paints do you rely on to be either heavier or lighter or more dense and less dense when you're doing your acrylic pores put that in the comments below and let's see if we can't get a good listing of which paints people believe are dense and thin make sure you include the exact paint color the quality of paint and the manufacturer and maybe sometime in the near future i can put that in a spreadsheet and put it on the leftbrainartist.com website